Welcome to this virtual class on the medieval period of English literature and society. This is the core paper one of semester one under national education policy. So here we shall be dealing with a particular period in the history of English literature. And that is the first period in that long history, the medieval period. So that's the title slide, the medieval period, semester one, English core paper one. So let's move on to the slides now. First, let's take a look at let's take a look at the time span, which is the time frame within which we can uh, put the medieval period of English literary and social history. Four hundred and fifty is the beginning, and the end of this period is fifteen hundred eighty. So middle of the fifth century and the beginning of the sixteenth century. Those are the demarcating lines. Now, the fifteen hundred we know because the 16th century is the century is the age of the Renaissance, beginning of the Renaissance. So that's the end of the medieval period. In, in every society between the medieval and the modern periods, there is a transitional period called the Renaissance. In English history, that Renaissance starts in 1500 or after 1500. Now the beginning, 450, that's important. Why is 450 or the middle of the fifth century taken as the beginning of the medieval period? In European history, you know, medieval, Medievalism or the medieval period starts with the fall of the Roman Empire. Now, England till 450 was a Roman colony. Now, this colonization is a term we usually use to refer to the period from the 16th century to the 20th century when the European powers vied for control over different countries in Africa, in Asia, in the Americas over the natives. But colonization actually was there even earlier times, even in earlier times. The Romans colonized different parts of the world, including England. Till 450, England was a colony or an extension of the Roman Empire. By about 410, the Romans actually departed, making way for these three Germanic tribes, Angles, Saxons, and Jews, to establish their rule in England. So that is the uh, beginning of the medieval period, the coming of the Angle sections and Jews and departure of the Romans. Now, what was there before 450? Surely it was not a vacuum. So before 450, the people we, we know about are called the Celts or the Celtic people. So this island, which we call England, was inhabited by the Celtic people from prehistoric times, actually. The historical period of uh, the English nation starts with the coming of Julius Caesar. Now, the Celts inhabited this island and in 43 AD, Celtic England was conquered by the Romans, led by Claudius. Now, even before Claudius conquered England and established the colony there, the Romans had defeated uh, the people of this island even before under the leadership of Julius Caesar. But Julius Caesar did not establish a colony he went back. The colony actually started in 43 AD. So Celtic people were now defeated, vanquished, and uh, they were actually pushed to the edges of the country in Wales, in Scotland, in Ireland. And descendants of these Celtic people are still th there in these parts of the United Kingdom. In 410, because mainly of two reasons, the attacks of the Anglo sections and Jews and other tribes relentlessly continued on England. At the same time, there were trouble, uh, civil strife, political turmoil in Rome. So the Romans decided it best to decolonize the island and leave in 410. So after that, slowly the Angle sections and Jews consolidated their control. And by 450, they were surely in power. They were the rulers of England. Now this medieval period from 450 to 1500, has been split into two parts actually. From 450 to 1066 is called the Old English or Anglo Saxon period. That Anglo Saxon, of course, comes from the Anglo Saxons and Jews. Even now, we call the English people the Anglo Saxons. Now, Old English is the uh, kind of the, is the English language of that phase of time. Old English. It is a Germanic language because the speakers speakers of this language are of German descent, the Anglo-Saxons and Jews. 
Now, 1066 begins another period within the medieval period, of course, it is called the Middle English or Anglo Norman. So the English language now comes into contact with the language of a different language, the Norman language, Norman French language, and evolves into by the mutual influences of the two languages, a new kind of language evolves, which is called the Middle English. Uh, very much influenced by Norman French vocabulary and pronunciation. And this period is also called Anglo-Norman because the Angles now blend with the Normans. The English is, England is now ruled by a group of people called the Normans and the Anglo-Saxons are no longer the rulers, they are the ruled. Now who, in this happened or this conquest of England by the Normans, which we'll discuss in the next slide, happens in 1066. Now, who were these Normans? Now, this not what was this Norman conquest? The people who conquered England in 1066 and uh, ruled over the Anglo Saxon and, of course, the Celts uh, since 1066 are called the Normans. And this name Norman actually comes from Northmen. They were originally called Northmen. Now, they were uh, Scandinavians or Norse people, actually. Remember, even during the Anglo-Saxon period, in the 9th century, England was attacked by Scandinavian or, or Danish or Viking or Norse people. They, in fact, had control over some areas in England, even during the Anglo-Saxon period. And those areas were called Dane laws. At about the same time, in, 900, uh, in the 9th century, actually, some Normans from Scandinavia, some Scandinavians from, from the Scandinavia, Scandinavian region went towards France, Northern France. And the king of France, Charles the Simple, granted Rollo, the leader of the Normans, a duchy or a dukedom in northern France called Normandy. And soon these people got assimilated with the French and they adopted the French culture and French language. So the language they brought to England was Norman French, a variety of the French language. And the culture they brought was French culture. Now, in 1066 or by 1066, Normandy was under Duke William. Though the Normans had adopted the French culture, their intrinsic Scandinavian zeal and their uh, desire for more territory, their martial spirit, they retained. And William was not content with Normandy. His eyes were set on more newer territories and especially the territory of England. So in 1066, there was this war between the Normans and the English. And on 14th October 1066, the Normans under Duke William defeated King Harold in the Battle of Hastings. And on 25th December, that is Christmas Day 1066, William was crowned the King of England. So this is the Norman conquest of England. And uh, initially, the Normans and the Anglo Saxons will be in a hostile relationship, but this will not continue for long. With time, there will be more and more inter interaction between them, more and more exchange between them. And in fact, they will evolve into one people speaking one language, the Middle English. This has been the story of human civilization, actually. Human beings have always moved and mixed with other peoples. So initial hostility leading to uh, more uh, interactions, more harmony, more assimilation. and this mixing is part of human civilization. Now, so the Middle English period, within the medieval period, is from 450 to 1500. The Middle English period is from 1066 to 1500. So it starts with that landmark event, the Norman conquest. The Norman conquest is a landmark event in English history. That was the last time England was quite permanently by any outside forces. From then ushers in a new age, 1066 to 1500, called the Middle English period. This Middle English period, from the literary point of view, is again divided into four smaller sections. 1066 to 1250 is called a period of religious record. That means during this period, most of the writings were only about religious topics. 1250 to 1350, literature transcends religion and accommodates other concerns, concerns about the society, about every, everyday life, about human emotions, about human feelings. This is the period of religious and secular writings. Religious writings continue, but there are also other writings uh, outside the scope of religion, outside the scope of God, heaven, etc., outside the scope of the 
next light. We are considering uh, this present light in the literature of the period. From 1350 to 1400 is called the period of great individual writers. Actually, this is the most important period for us. You students must be very focused on this period. This is the most important period in the medieval period. It is this period in which the English nation actually comes on its own. The English language has developed now. It has taken its own uh, position. Of course, the old English language now is on the heavy influence of the Norman French language. But that is what the Middle English language is. And in this period, we see the growth of a number of great individual writers. Why great individual writers? Because before that, most of the writers were anonymous. We don't know their names. It now is the time when we have the rise of writers like Chaucer, Langland, and Gower. So this 1350 and 1400 is very important in that respect. And in our subsequent presentations, at some point, we shall be discussing these great writers, especially Chaucer. Then after 1400 comes a slum. And it is natural, actually. It always happens after a high point there is a slum, a barrenness, but there is also a preparation for the next great age, the Renaissance. Hence, this period is called a period of transition. Now, coming to the effects of the Norman conquest. The Norman conquest is a landmark event. It will naturally affect the landscape, the society, the politics, the economy, the everyday life. The first important impact of the Norman conquest is political unity. The England now becomes strongly united. The different centers of power during the Anglo-Saxon period that we witnessed is a thing of the past now. Under William the Conqueror, England achieves political stability and political unity. A very important impact of the Norman conquest on the social structure and also the economy is what is called feudalism. feudalism European feudalism was in, imported into England by the Normans. This feudalism is a system of giving land for services, which of course we'll deal with in our uh, subsequent slides in this class itself. Overall, we can say the Norman conquest brought about a blending of German culture and Romance culture. Now Germanic culture, because the Angle sections and Jews who were the rulers of England before the Norman conquest, they are Germanic tribes. So their way of life is Germanic. Their language is Germany, their culture is Germany. Now comes another group with a different culture, actually, the Romance culture. Romance culture is actually French culture. The Normans, we said they had adopted French culture. Now, French language and culture are called Romance culture because the French language developed out of Latin, which is a Roman language. So now, after 1066, you will see initially they're hostile, the Germanic and the Romance groups, but with time, naturally, it is human to uh, uh, actually mingle to intermarry, to harmonize, and to, to develop a, a syncretic society. So the Germanic culture blends with the Romance culture. This is the great, this is the great influence of the Norman conquest. This Norman conquest, again, as we already said, led to the growth of the Middle English language. The old Anglo-Saxon language was heavily influenced by vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation of the French language. Also very important, as a result of the Norman conquest, new literary devices and forms, many of them were, were imported from the Romance culture, Romance literature. Most importantly, the highlights are the importation of, first of all, rhyme. Rhyme, you know, the, what is the repetition of the sounds at the end of two words. This rhyme was imported into English poetry after the Norman conquest. Before that, the anglo sections had a different sound pattern called alliteration, the repetition of consonant sounds at the beginning of a stressed syllable. So now rhyme replaces alliteration, a big impact on literature. Then there are new literary genres coming in, most significantly the romance. The romance is a narrative form which narrates the adventures of a knight. In the knight who is a, a soldier on horseback has a very important role to play under this feudal society. The romances depict knightly ideals, the codes of conduct of the knight. And this codes of conduct of the knight is called chivalry, a new literary and social concept which comes into English society. The word chivalry comes from the French word chevalier, which means knight. 
So severely refers to knightly codes of conduct. And another literary concept that comes into English literature post the Norman conquest is courtly love, a kind of spiritual love between the knight and a lady. And, to, and for that, for the sake of his love, the knight takes part in a number of adventures. He has to face a number of tests and trials. So those are the uh, subject matters of romances and are also other medieval forms of literature. These are uh, some of the most important impacts of the Norm Norman conquest encapsulated in a single slide for you. Now coming to feudalism. Now feudalism, we said one of, is one of the uh, important impacts of the Norman conquest. It is a system imported into England by the Normans. What is this system? It is a system of giving land for services. It, it is a hierarchical society. Uh, it, uh, it issues fourth hierarch hierarchical society. Now in this hierarchical society, knights play a very important, important role. This giving the, the king, here William the Conqueror, distributes the land among his lords, the duke, scounts, earls, etc., who are called the tenants in chief. In return, they will have to give him service, military service particularly. And these lords will again distribute their land among the knights. And knights will in return give them uh, military service. Knights will also distribute the land among the peasants uh, or, the, or the serfs. These peasants and serfs will have to give provide service to the knight in the form of working in his demean land, in his own plot of land. This is the system called the feudal system. And the feudal society of the Middle English period has three estates. The society can be divided into three estates. The aristocracy consisting of the king and the lords, the clergy consisting of the priests, the people associated with the church, and of course the common people, the peasants. This is the social uh, social impact of the Norman conquest. So this is a visual representation of European feudalism, which is replicated in England after 1066. A feudal society is called a pyramid-like society. Its structure is pyramid-like. At the top, you have the, you have the king. At the bottom, you have the serfs. And the triangle uh, represents in front of you this feudal system. The king distributes the land to his nobles. Nobles distribute their lands to the knights. Knights distribute the lands to the peasants. And they, in their turn, offer services to the, to the lords just above them. This is what the feudal system is. Now, we have dealt with some of the most important uh, aspects of Middle English literature. We dealt with the Norman conquest. Who were the Normans? what kind of impacts the Normans brought into the English society, the different social impacts, cultural impacts, linguistic impacts, and of course, literary impact. So this, is, this was a, a kind of a 360 degree view of the middle, middle English period, which is a significant part of the medieval period in general. And remember, as far as your syllabus goes, it is this medieval period, Middle English period, which is of primary importance. And to have an understanding of this period, we must be very clear about what the Norman conquest is, what the effects of Norman conquest were. And among the effects, most importantly, social impact was feudalism, literary impact was rhyme and romance, along with others, and literary concepts like uh, courtly love and chivalry. So I hope this particular presentation will be of help it will act as a supplement for our brick and mortar classes, which will help you in understanding better, better, grasping better the Middle English period. And that will be the launching pad for your, uh, the other periods of English literature. So I hope this works well. Thank you once again.